Popping fucking hoes and popping pillies, man, I feel just like a rock star. We're back at one of the oldest and one of the best racing tracks on the Formula One calendar. Welcome to Suzuka, where the practice session is just about to start. One of the more intimidating corners on any Formula One track is the legendary 130R. Whilst unusual, the name actually comes from the original design of the corner, a 130 meter radius turn starting just past the track crossover. Over the years, due to several severe accidents, the corner's been redesigned to create a straighter entry and creating what is now a double apex left-handed corner. Despite the changes, this is still one of the most exhilarating corners that drivers in F1 have to take. It's not normally considered an overtaking spot, but this is the scene of one of Fernando Alonso's most famous manoeuvres, when in 2005 he passed Michael Schumacher's Ferrari around the outside. Hey guys, my name is Sujus Gaming and today I'm back with another video and today I'm back with part 38 of my F1 2018 career mode here in Japan and we're already in practice as you can see getting as many resource points as possible not really sure why I don't really need them anymore as we um well we have such a dominant car uh yeah we're gonna get purple and pretty much everything yeah like I said I don't really need them uh it's just sorry to fill out the time I guess uh, I don't really know why I'm showing them still but hey though it is what it is but at the end of um, call it a uh, practice at least. We are going fastest once again, and for the f like first time in a couple of races, we've actually got tyres that go in a row. Finally, oh, I don't know why I'm so happy about that, but hey, it is what it is. And yeah, this is what how many resource points we're gonna get from this session. There's not really much to um spend them on, to be honest. We do get a couple of um upgrades. We did get a couple of upgrades going on the car. For the session, we get 429 resource points. We're now up to 2229 uh, resource points ahead of the, um, well, left. That's how many we got to spend, at least. So that's what I'm trying to say. I can't believe spit it out. Jesus. Um, but, yeah. Finish fifth or above, and we get another 400 resource points. So, pretty simple. With five races left to go, uh, I don't really need to upgrade the car any like much more. But we probably will. We might go for, um, well, yeah, we're probably going to spend our resource points on uh, that those upgrades. And until we, well, we can't really do that until that major upgrade is gone on the car. But, hey, it is what it is. We might as well just continue. But, anyway, let's go into uh, quali for the Japanese Grand Prix to see where we'll be starting for the Grand Prix. Welcome to Japan and the impressive Suzuka track for today's qualifying session where we should be underway shortly. Now then, Anthony Davidson, you're not getting any younger, but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you have that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. You're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now and it never gets any easier. So here we are in Q1, literally only setting one lap time on the super soft tyres. Up to the line we set a 129.5 and I was very happy with that for some reason. And I should be, 126.5 actually, I think that says. Um, but yeah, it gets us through into Q2. So it goes to Rocket Van Dorn, Grosjean, Gasly and Magnussen are all out. So no one from the same team, uh, so I lie, people from Haas are out. Um, they're both out anyway. But Q2 now, um, we're going to set a, is this our banker? No, this is us going on to our lap time. Perez has already set a lap time. Uh, we're late to the party here. Go through the two Degners though. We do lose quite a lot of time at the AI through that section, but we gain it. A, we gain a lot of time back through this section here. Um, I don't know why they lift off a little bit there. A uh, bit of a shame though, because we do gain like, quite a lot of time. But we go faster. Then Perez, we set, and we're on a su super soft tyres, just to say, and we've gone pole by three hundredths of a second. Very very close between me and Perez. Sites Ricardo, Stroll, Ericsson, Hartley are all out. Of the session, so that's a bit of a sh like, shock that um, Danny Ricardo's out. That's a bit of a shock, but hey, oh, it is what it is. But a Q3, this is our first run. Hamilton set a 128.5. We 
Oh, so I'm going to set a 126.4 in our first run at least. So, uh, yeah. But we're going to go on to our second run here. Already faster than Perez. Perez has already set his lap time. He is already in second place. We will only have to, like, I think, is he on a lap time? Yeah, I think Perez is on a lap time going through the hairpin right now. So, if we are far, if he sets his lap time and we're still first, we are guaranteed pole position unless we take a penalty. But I don't think that's going to happen as we've got quite a lot of, um, like, durability left. I think we've got pretty much a new power unit going into this Grand Prix. But look at that. Through that first section there, it got redone for F1 2017. And this season, with the aerodynamics I have on my car, it is so good. Look at how much time we lose through that section, though. Uh, for the two Degnans. We lost quite a lot of time there. So we're going to lose. We're not going to gain as much time as I was like hoping for. We do gain um, a little bit of time through the hairpin. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, I'm not sure what I did on my first run there. To be honest. But it is what it is. Perez has set his lap time. So we're guaranteed first place. We are like. We're definitely on pole. But uh, we're going to improve no matter what. I, I just like seeing how much I can push this car. And how much I can improve by. I want to know for myself, as well as, um, like, see how fast I am, as well as see how fast our car is. But right back, I think that's a tenth. Uh, I can't really read it, it's a bit blurry. But all we've got left is basically three corners to go. The chicane, clip in the curb, clip on the curb on the exit as well. Um, and now, just a little bit, of, there's a little bit of bounce there that sends your car sideways. Out to the line, though, we are guaranteed pole position for the Japanese Grand Prix. Oh, that is, uh, is that a third part? Did we get a pole in Russia? Yeah, we got a pole in Russia. Not in um, Singapore. We had a really bad quality in Singapore. Seven tenths faster than Sergio Perez at the end of that session. Lewis Hamilton was fourth. Rickon was third. Fifth was um, Vettel. Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Leclerc and Alonso rounds off the top ten there. So that is how the session... Uh, well, the race will start for the top ten at least. I can't remember the order of the, um, the rest of the grid. Uh... That's how the session will start, will line up anyway, unless there's penalties, uh, which towards the end of the season is more than likely to happen, so I wouldn't be too shocked if there is, but now Claire wants to speak to us, she said I'm confident after taking your qualifying, like doing the qualifying, yeah, I, was I said I was pretty confident, she said is it, is it good to get the reliability just out of the way in practice? Uh, yeah, it's well better. It's Well, that's probably the best time to get it because it doesn't mean anything. It's not going to hinder you towards the race unless you have to take a penalty because of it. Um, but hey ho, it is what it is. We're going to get some more resource points. We're now four points ahead in the rivalry between our Paris, uh, Paris. And we're 12 points ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. So we've only got three more points to get. And we probably will beat him in this Grand Prix. So he is our closest rival. But uh, in the championship rival, that isn't Paris. So that's a bit of a shame. Anyway, let's go into the Grand Prix for the Japanese Grand Prix. Live today from the Mie Prefecture of Japan as we look forward to the Japanese Grand Prix. The 2015 race here was one of only five Grand Prix in history to feature no retirements at all. Although with a highly competitive field we have today, I don't expect we'll be repeating that stat anytime soon. 18 corners make up a lap of the incredible figure of eight Suzuka circuit with 10 to the right and eight to the left for a distance of 3.6 miles. Average lap speeds around here are fairly quick. If it stays dry, then expect somewhere in the region of 136 miles per hour. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Joker. What do you make of their performance so far this season? It's been a really solid year so far. There have been some incredible standout performances, but what's really impressed me has been the consistency. With this kind of form, I'm expecting another great race today. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Joker lines up on pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Hamilton, Max Verstappen, and Hülkenberg, Bottas, Leclerc, Alonso, and Sebastian Vettel. They've taken a grid penalty. Sainz, Ricardo, Lance Stroll, and Ericsson, Hartley, Sirotkin, Stoffel van Dorn, and Roman Grosjean. Gasly and Kevin Magnussen rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. So here we are, sat on the grid ahead of the uh, Japanese Grand Prix. I didn't get to see if there's any penalties um, towards any of the other cars. 
I don't think there was towards the back of the grid anyway, so hey oh, it is what it is. But it's going to be a one-star strategy. Uh, we've they basically guaranteed that when we was went on um, the super soft tyres for Q2. Uh, yeah, we basically guaranteed the one-star strategy unless it starts raining, but there's no rain forecast. So, yeah, we should definitely be able to pull off the one-stop unless I'm a retard. Um, not sure what the AI are doing. I think they're either going to do the one-stop or the two-stop. They're on the super soft tyres, so it's probably going to be pushed towards... It's going to be tight between a one-stop or a two-stop. Uh, probably Perez will do a one-stop, which would be a bit unfortunate. I hope he does, like, a ten-stop, so then we basically guaranteed another win. Um, but, yeah. But we're lining up on the grid ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix here at Suzuka. We've got one, two, three, four, five lights ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go. We've had an awful start there. AI around us with their super soft tyres, a grippier tyres have had amazing start. We've already dropped down to P4, going into turn one. Though we're on the inside of both the two finished drivers there, and back up into P2. Now what we have to do is catch up to our teammate, who's already pulled away. But lap 16 has taken us till, it's taken us till lap 16, uh, for some reason. Uh, I've already pitted. Uh, I've missed out on my pit stop, to be honest. I don't know. I think I accidentally deleted that of our editing. Um, yeah, we're already going side by side with our teammate into the hairpin. We managed to catch him up, with, uh, with, but unfortunately we were on the outside. I tried the undercut bit uh, under and over, but it didn't really work. We got 11 laps left, basically, to catch him up. We've got 11 lap, 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 laps left now. We need to get, if we want this win, we have to get past Perez right a second. And speaking of which, we are. We're lunging up the inside of Degna 1 and Degna 2. We lined up the move at the exit of Degna two, uh, 1, and we managed to get the move in Degna 2. But now, the uh, Sebastian Vettel is going side by side with all the Williams drivers. Here we go, but Williams the drivers have lost control. I can't, oh my god. He's been taken out by one of the Toro Rosso and the other Toro Rosso. The two Toro Rossos have actually gangbanged the Williams driver there. I think that's Sergei Sorokin. No, it's not. It's Lance Stroll. But look, look at this. Lance Stroll gets taken out by the, um, by the Ferrari. Then gets taken out by one of the Torosos, and then the other Torosso takes him out. Uh, bloody hell, but lap 18 now. He, uh, Perez is right behind us, I think this is, so he's, he might be... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here he goes. Upper inside, we're going to squeeze him towards the pit wall. Schumacher and Barrichello-esque, kind of a hungry. But we're going to sweep round his outside into turn one. We've gone very wide. Still on his outside, but we managed to keep P1 um, after lap 19. But lap 21 now, going on to lap 22. We've just lapped someone, but this is Perez lapping the same car, and he's had contact with the Williams again. Sergey Sorokin. The, both the Williams are in like they're in the mud or whatever, the dirt, whatever the be saying is. Oh, I don't know, but Kimi Räikkönen is out at the Grand Prix on lap 25. We are pulling away from Perez massively after that collision, but lap 27 around the final chicane, around the final corner. Now we're going to come home for another win. In his career mode. That third in the row. Pretty sure it is. Singapore. We won. Did we win Singapore? Yeah, we won Singapore. We won Russia. We won Japan. We won Italy. That's our fourth in the row. That's our fourth bloody win in a row, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Doubt anyone's actually watching this far into the video. But hey oh, it is what it is. I don't care if anyone watches these videos. I don't really yeah. Not the end of the world if no one does, but hey, oh, it is what it is. I've already said that, but Ericsson actually got a pretty decent. He's got some points on the board. Once again, this Sauber is actually looking pretty decent, you know. Looking like a midfield team, like it did in real life in um, F1 2018. But Lewis Hamilton, other than the Force India drivers, is the uh, other driver to be on the podium here. So that's two British and one Mexican on the podium as we lift the trophy for the number one position. As Champagne is getting sprayed. When? Ugh. When will our dominance stop in this sport? No time soon by the looks of it. Ugh. But hey, it is what it is. Charles Leclerc coming four. Fantastic result for the bloody Monegas driver there. But now, as you can see there, we're 75 points ahead of um, Sergio Perez. If we get one point, if we come 10th and Perez doesn't get any points, we will win. The F1 World Drivers Championship in this next Grand Prix. That is how like that is how close we are 
to winning the championship with 75 points ahead Perez still could win there's four races left 100 points maximum for the driver who um but if the driver if one if Perez wins every single Grand Prix from now on I get no points Perez will win the championship by 25 points I hope that doesn't happen to be honest because we are so close to winning the championship here like so close one point exactly right, if we win next time out we or we if we beat Perez next time out no matter what we will win the championship I'm pretty sure it's fucking fantastic but Claire now wants to speak to us she said I must be thrilled to be on the podium the team put a lot of faith in me I'm just glad to live up to it easy answers to please the team you know uh, she says things look close between me and Daniel Ricciardo for a bit but you came out on top I'm guessing we've beat him in the uh, rivalry there and it's looking like a championship is already won do you think there's still time for this to change it's not over until the trophy is in my hands uh, that is very true that's going to also put us into um, more t a little bit towards the uh, sportsmanship uh, side of the um, you know, personality thing but yeah, we've that's now confirmed that we have beat Daniel Ricciardo in our rivalry. So that's going to give us 250 more resource points that we don't really need, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's just bonus, really. Uh, we're going to get 658 resource points from that Grand Prix, which is very, very good. We've got 3,000 resource points now. All we have to do now is wait until upgrades are on the car. We could go with that brake upgrade, but we're going to go for those three minor upgrades um, just so we can go towards like and get more stuff towards the car and um, we don't really need it but we're just going to go with the flow really we might we are contemplating we are actually going to go with the ultimate um break upgrade to be honest i didn't think we would uh, it's not really going to matter towards the championship as it's going to be on the car for Abu Dhabi which is the final race of the season um but yeah there we go with us another look at the trophy that we won it's, yeah it's not really going to matter if we um if that upgrade goes on the car or not because we're not doing another season of this career mode it's confirmed we're only doing buddy two seasons at the most and yeah this is the final season sorry to ruin it for all you fanboys of this season but f1 2019 is right around the corner and yeah i want to be posting videos on that if i can even afford it that is the thing, but now we're look, just looking at the, um, my results, as well as the AI results, and we just dominated this season. The Force India boys have dominated, but now we're in USA, and that part has been put on the car. No, it hasn't. It's actually fucking failed. That is unbelievable. The part has failed on the car, so we're now going to have to wait till Mexico. So, no more upgrades will affect our car throughout the, well, for winning the championship. Any upgrades we purchase from now on, if we win this Grand Prix at least, or if we win at this Grand Prix, no matter upgrade will count. It's highly likely that we're going to win this Grand Prix, uh, in this Grand Prix. Um, it's very, very likely, to be honest. So hopefully it does happen, and hopefully we can just mess about for the last like three Grand Prix, which is Mexico, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. So hopefully we do win the championship. I've said that so many times in the last like 10 seconds. But I mean it. Hopefully we do win this championship in this in the usa grand prix but that's we gonna have to wait until next episode to find out if i do but anyway i've been to this game in and the season is coming to an end anyway i'll see you in the next one bye